Let's talk about um, different acupuncture needles. We want to look at sizes and shapes and different applications for different acupuncture needles and why you might choose one acupuncture needle over another. Well, the first thing is we're going to talk about the types of needles that we use in general. So in general, in the United States, in most jurisdictions, it's recommended or required that we use single-use disposable acupuncture needles. Single-use disposable acupuncture needles come in boxes oftentimes of about 100 needles to a box, something like this, um, in individual packages. Um, they're oftentimes the sizes of the needles are going to be printed right on the outside of the box so that we can see what kind of needles that we're using. Um, these particular needles are a number three by 30 millimeters and number three is 0 0.2. 20 millimeters in thickness. So we're going to keep two parameters in mind, the length of the acupuncture needle as well as the thickness of the acupuncture needle, the thickness of the body of the needle. And that brings up the question of the different parts of the needle. There are basically two parts of a needle, but we do talk about them as three parts of an acupuncture needle. There's the body of the needle or the shaft of the needle, which is the actual needle itself. There's the handle, which will be either metal or plastic. And then there's the point of the needle. Now, when we're look, thinking about the point of the acupuncture needle, one thing that I want you to remember is that an acupuncture needle has a pencil-like point. It's a round and a solid point. So, uh, different from an, a needle that's used for an injection, which will have a sharp cutting edge, an acupuncture needle has a round point which tends to push tissue out of the way rather than cut tissue. So it makes it a much safer needle to work with. That's the first thing. The other thing to remember is that when we are inserting acupuncture needles into the skin, we never want to insert a needle all the way up to the handle. We always need to leave some portion of the shaft visible for safety reasons, and we can talk about that at some point in the future. But for right now, let's just remember that we never want to insert a needle any deeper than, let's say, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of the shaft still left showing. If uh, there was a problem, and for instance, if a handle came off of a needle, which would be very unusual, but it's a possibility, or if a needle broke off and we needed to be able to grab this needle with forceps, we need to have some of that needle showing. So we, we want to choose our acupuncture needles based on their length and also based on their thickness. Now, the thickness of the acupuncture needle is... Um, oftentimes simply based on the practitioner's preference. So some practitioners like a heavier needle, some practitioners like a thinner needle. Um, there is certainly a, a degree of comfort for the patient associated with a needle being thicker or thinner. A very thick needle is going to necessarily be a little bit more painful to insert than a very thin needle. However, your ability to manage that needle and to manipulate that needle is also very important. So a needle that's particularly thin, if it's too thin to be easily managed, then it may be more painful for your patient. So in many cases, a heavier needle can be less painful for the patient. It's something that you need to experiment with as you practice, and in fact, the more you practice acupuncture and the better your needling technique becomes, then you can move on to thinner needles. But in the beginning, it always seems to be best to use a slightly heavier needle. We'll say a number three or a number five needle is a good place to start with. So let's take a look at these needles, number three, number five, number eight, so different sizes um, and the different lengths. Um, this needle that I've just showed you for demonstration is a uh, reusable needle. Now, we don't use reusable needles very often. Um, certainly in the United States, as I mentioned, most jurisdictions require or recommend that we use single-use disposable needles. Um, however, for many years and still in uh, different countries around the world, reusable needles are used. They need to be cleaned after use and then sterilized um, and then kept in a sterile condition before being used again. Um, we Again, don't recommend it, and we're going to not be using any disposable, any reusable needles throughout this course. Um, so I'm going to take this reusable needle, I'm going to set it off to the side, 
and we're going to begin looking at the single-use disposable needles. Now the most common single-use disposable needle um, that I use in practice and that many practitioners use is this. This is a one inch needle or a 30 millimeter needle. Um, it has a blue handle and these handles are color coded and these colors are becoming fairly standard within the industry. So generally if you see a light blue handle you can assume that it's a number three or a 0 0.20 millimeter thickness needle. That color coding applies to the thickness of the needle. The lengths of the needle vary. So you can have for instance a 30 millimeter purple handled needle like this one which is a number five and this one I don't know if it's showing up on the video but when we open it up you'll see that this also has a purple um, uh, color code to it. It's a slightly different needle so it's color coded differently but this is also a number five so this is a number five 30 millimeter this is a number five 40 millimeter slightly longer but the color remains the same. Now when we open up a uh, blister pack needle. It's opened just as I just showed you. You peel the paper from the plastic, the needle and its insertion tube will be in here, and the needle should be anchored in the insertion tube. If it's a plastic handled needle, it's usually anchored with a small weld or a drop of glue that connects the um, handle of the needle to the insertion tube. So we can break that off by just grabbing the needle handle and grabbing the insertion tube giving it a slight twist and that will crack it open. Now this needle is floating freely inside the insertion tube. You're going to grab the handle of the needle and the insertion tube between your thumb and your index finger and then you can proceed to insert the needle in the patient. The uh, insertion tube and the packaging should be tossed in a trash barrel and then we move on to our next needle. But let's take a look. Here's the first needle that um, I'm, I'm showing you um, and I said this is a, a, a kind of my most common needle. When I uh, am in practice I would use 10 of these needles to every one of any other needle that I might use. So um, quite common. I feel very comfortable with a uh, 30 millimeter number three needle and can do most of the needling that needs to be done in practice with this needle. Now there are certainly needles that are thinner than this. There's a number two needle, there's a number one needle, there's a zero needle and a double zero as we get thinner and thinner. I'm going to show you a number one needle as an example and how that compares to a number three needle. This is, these are the same length. So this is a, uh, again a 30 millimeter or one inch needle. I break the attachment there. The needle is then floating free, holding it between my thumb and forefinger and I insert it into the practice pad. Um, these needles are uh, similar to one another. Perhaps we can see um, that the red one is thinner when we use them to you know to push against one another. You can see how much more the red one will flex than the blue one. Um, the red one will always flex much more. It's much thinner. Um, it's maybe difficult to see that with the naked eye or through the video. But as we move up to the next step of needles, we might start to see the difference a little bit more clearly. This is a number five needle. Right? Now the difference between these thicknesses is very minor. Um, this, a, a number three needle is 0 0.5 two zero millimeters in thickness. A number five needle is 0 0.25 millimeters in thickness. Once again we break the weld or the glue spot, hold the needle between the needle, our thumb and forefinger and tap the needle in. Now this is again a little bit thicker. Perhaps if I bend the needles you can see that that needle stays fairly straight whereas this one bends quite a bit. Um, even uh, and perhaps we can see a difference with the blue one. It's hard to get it all on video. Now let me show you another needle. Um, this is, again is a number five. It's the same thickness as this one but this is a metal handled needle. Let me open up a number eight. A number eight um, is uh, again thicker than a number five and this is a two inch or a uh, 60 millimeter and you can see that this needle now has a uh, small plastic um, uh, bit 
that holds the needle handle in place. So it's like a little spade. So when we remove that, then the needle comes free. And the reason that this is packaged this way, and this is a common packaging for acupuncture needles um, that are steel handled because we can't glue them or weld them to the side of the uh, insertion tube. So we insert that needle. Now, I think you may be able to see the difference in the thicknesses of these needles um, between the number one, the number three, the number five, and now the number eight. And then we're going to move on to a final needle, um, which is uh, uh, much longer um, and slightly thicker once again, just to give you a, kind of a bit more of... Uh, comparisons for these needles. And one of the things that I want to point out again, and I'm going to move these each one at a time so that you can see um, how the needles, if you watch how the needles bend when I'm doing a freehand insertion, that's fairly straight. Again, fairly straight. These one inch needles are very easy to put in and we get very little bending of the needle as it's being put into the Point, although you can see that the red one, the number one, will bend the easiest. As we get into a longer needle, you're going to start to see a little bit of movement. I don't know if you saw that, that little bit of movement of that needle. Um, and with a, uh, a two and a half inch needle, you can see it much more. You can see that kind of, you know, the movement that's happening of that needle as I'm putting it in. So the longer the needle is, um, and, and that's an acceptable amount, but it's still going to cause a little bit of discomfort for the patient. So the longer your needle is, generally the thicker you want it to be in order for it to be comfortable for your patient. So those are your basic acupuncture needles, your standard needles that we use when we do standard acupuncture treatments. These needles are generally inserted, left in place for anywhere from a few seconds to up to 20 minutes and then removed. There are some other needles that we want to talk about, um, so let's move on to those. I would like to show you two other types of needles. Besides your standard acupuncture needle, which we are familiar with and, and I've just looked at the number one, the number three, number five, number eight, different lengths and different thicknesses. We also have two other main categories of needles. One is needles that are uh, semi-permanent needles, needles which are placed into the skin and generally taped in place and left there for some period of time, anything from a few hours up to a few days. And the other category of needles are bleeding needles. And while um, we don't bleed patients like they did in the 17 or 1800s, um, we're not ever looking to extract, for instance, a certain amount of blood with acupuncture treatments. However, we do sometimes want to do techniques that do um, let blood from the system, a few drops here and there, um, as a significantly stronger way of stimulating an acupuncture point or an area or a group of acupuncture points. So we'll take a look at those as well. First, let's look at the semi-permanent needles or the ones that are left in place. There are a few applications for semi-permanent needles and ear acupuncture or auricular therapy is probably the most common. So let's take a look at this ear model that I have down here and I'll demonstrate some of these um, uh, more common of the semi-permanent needles. The two that I'm going to show you are um, uh, what we call a just a interdermal needle or a semi-permanent needle. Um, these are uh, this is a number one needle as you recall, so it's going to be the same thickness as this uh, number one needle that we looked at earlier. Um, but it certainly is a significantly shorter length. This is a six millimeter needle, and you can see that it has a small handle or a small circle at the top. The needle is curved around, so it. Um, gives you something to use for a handle for inserting it, but also to keep the needle from being um, over inserted into the skin. Um, and the other type of needle, this is called an ASP needle. The company that makes these is ASP. Um, these are, uh, again, semi-permanent needles that are intended for ear acupuncture, um, and these give a much stronger stimulation than 
the standard interdermal needles. But let's take a look at the interder standard interdermal needle first. Again, these are all blister packed um, and pre-sterilized single-use disposable needles. We open them the same way as we do a regular acupuncture needle. You're going to peel the plastic from the paper. The needle is going to come up. There is no insertion tube in this small needle. We're going to grab that with a pair of forceps. We take the handle and then this needle is inserted. When these needles are inserted, they're inserted um, as a transverse insertion. So we would lay them down on the skin almost and then slide them in so that when you're done, the handle of this needle is laying flat against the skin. This makes it less uncomfortable for the patient if there's some pressure on that point rather than if it was straight in. Once the needle is put in, we're going to take a piece of tape. These plasters, these are the plasters that come with the ASP needles, but these plasters are also available, or similar plasters are also available um, for uh, interdermal needles uh, from acupuncture suppliers. Then we put a piece of tape over top of the needle, tape it in place, and this will hold for uh, some period of time. This, these particular tapes don't want to stick to my rubber model, um, but they do stick to skin. When we remove the acupuncture needles, once this tape has been on for uh, some period of time, um, it will generally stick to the needle so that when we grab the tape and pull the tape off, the needle will come with it. Not happening in this example, but that's fairly common. Um, if, the, if you take the tape off and the needle is still there, then it's simply a matter of grabbing the needle and removing it the same way that you put it in. So these small interdermal needles, again, very common, uh, commonly used for ear acupuncture points. Um, but we'll take a look at um, uh, this slightly newer uh, style of uh, semi-permanent needle called ASP needles. Um, they, uh, in fact, I'm going to leave this needle here just for comparison. Um, so you can see the difference between these needles. Now the ASP needle, is a very small, um, in this case it's a gold plated needle um, and you can perhaps see it in the tip of this applicator. I have one here which I've already taken out of the applicator and placed and I'm going to place it um, here for you to, to see it. You can perhaps see that that is a small, there's a small barrel and what looks a little bit like an arrow point to it. Um, and so this arrow point will help it to anchor and generally we want it to anchor into the cartilage. The way that this applicator works is that it is two parts. It's two pieces of plastic. Um, we can see there's a plastic rod and there's a plastic tube and the needle sits at the tip of the plastic tube waiting to be pushed out by the rod simply by pressing and pushing it out. So I'll show you that application here when we apply it, let's say to uh, Shen Men in the ear, this acupuncture point, the push till it clicks and that needle then is well anchored into the cartilage. And these generally don't come out very easily. These want to want to stay in. Um, they are certainly much thicker. Um, it, it may be difficult to see, but the thickness of that arrowhead point um, is certainly much thicker than a number one. It's in fact thicker even than the number eight that we saw earlier. This is the thicker needle. Um, so these are these give quite a bit of stimulation. Um, these are commonly used for treating painful conditions um, when using ear acupuncture. Again, uh, once these needles are inserted, we're going to take a uh, piece of tape, a plaster, and we're going to cover it over to keep that area clean, to keep that needle in place. And when removing it, we generally remove the tape and oftentimes, as happened here, the needle will come out along with the tape. And if the needle does not come out with the tape, it's just a matter of simply grabbing with forceps or even with your fingernail being able to scrape that out. So that's a fairly simple procedure. Now, um, we do have some other uh, types of needles which I mentioned before. So let me move this and we'll take a look at the 
other class of needles, which is bleeding needles. Now, this is a bleeding needle, um, a reusable bleeding needle, a traditional, what we call a three-edged needle or a triangular needle, which was used for bleeding acupuncture points. And again, we're not after a lot of blood, but taking a few drops out of an acupuncture point, for instance, a point like large intestine one, will strongly stimulate that meridian. So if there's pain along the large intestine meridian, for instance, shoulder pain, um, we may very well want to take a few drops of blood out of this point. Um, traditionally, we would just use this triangular edge needle and just make the insertion. I can show you on a practice pad. Let me remove these needles. And of course, the needle insertion technique for this would be a quick jab and then perhaps squeezing some blood out. Um, the way that we do it nowadays, um, we want to use single-use disposable needles um, whenever possible. And so we generally use a lancet. Um, lancets are uh, easily available. Um, there are many ways to use lancets. We can use them, again, very simply by taking the top off the lancet, exposing the needle. Um, we generally, we would set that down so that we can use it again in just a minute. Um, we would then make the insertion, uh, make the small hole, be able to get the blood out, and then this can be recapped carefully, one-handed, you know, into the table so that you can't hurt yourself, and then this would go into a biohazard container. Um, another way of using a lancet is to use an auto lancet, an auto lancet device such as this one, which is a spring-loaded device. We would be able to take the we take the top off of this device. There's a spring-loaded mechanism in here which can be cocked and shot out. We would put the uh, lancet device or the lancet in the device. Take the top off. Put the protector on. Set it to a depth, the appropriate depth, which is the deepest depth, which would be number five on this particular one. Cock it, and then you would place it on the point, push the button, and very quickly it would lance that point, and we would be able to get a few drops of blood out. When we we're done, we would take this out. We would again put it in to the cap to protect it, and then we can place this in a biohazard container. The only problem with this is that there's a possibility that some blood can get trapped in here when using this on a patient, and so it's preferable not to use lancet devices on multiple patients. And using lancet devices and tossing them out each time you use them can become expensive, or else they can be cleaned, um, thoroughly cleaned with a high-level disinfectant. However, what's recommended is that we use single-use disposable lancet devices as well, if we're going to use those devices. Um, this is an example of one of them where we would remove the um, protecting part here, and there's a spring-loaded lancet in here that you can, again, press against the, the, uh, the point on the patient, and that would lance the point. Then this entire um, mechanism and needle are put into a biohazard container. There's one other type of a bleeding needle that I would like to just mention to you here. It's not, again, all that commonly used. This is called the seven star or a plum blossom needle. And you can see that it has um, seven small needles um, on a, a kind of a hammerhead on a flexible handle. And this is used to stimulate large areas. Um, this may be used for something like um, if someone had herpes zoster or shingles and there was pain over a large area and we wanted to very strongly stimulate that area, we could use it in this manner where we would hit a lot of points in, in one uh, area and then uh, we would probably see small little drops of blood coming out. Again, you wouldn't get very much blood at all. Um, it's not a very comfortable treatment for the patient, but it can be very useful in certain painful situations. So um, we've looked at now 
uh, standard acupuncture needles, and we've looked at a small variety of um, single-use disposable um, semi-permanent needles, as well as some various ways of uh, bleeding needles that we might use on an acupuncture treatment. The only other type of needle that I want to mention, again, and it's not really a, a needle, but there are many non-invasive um, tools that are used for doing acupuncture um, that don't penetrate the skin and are used simply for uh, putting pressure on acupuncture points. Um, and these are an example of two um, of those types of tools. They have rounded points. They Therefore, they, of course, don't... Uh, enter the skin, and they can be used to just press on an acupuncture point. These are oftentimes used um, for infants, for children, or for other types of treatments. Um, this is a just a solid probe. This one is spring-loaded, as you can see here, um, so it will give you some uh, varying levels of pressure depending upon how hard you press it. Um, okay, well, I think that covers most of our uh, basic tools and taking a look at them. We'll look at how to use them on individuals in uh, future uh, classes. Thank you.